Hello, my name is Cody Brown and welcome to Budget Astro. Today we're going to be talking about dual band processing, specifically in Photoshop, turning a dual band RGB color image into the Hubble palette. Let's get started. Alright, so starting out we have data from the Dumbbell Nebula M27. This is a straight stack. I have not processed this in any way other than stacking it together in Deep sta Stacker. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is stretch the data. So I'm going to come over here, Adjustments, Levels, and I'm going to take this middle guy right here and bring it up. This is going to give a good basic stretch so we can see what's going on in all the images. Once I do that, I'm just going to merge visible. And that's where we're going to start. Now, if we look here on the histogram, we'll see that none of the channels are aligned yet. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about that. Now, if I was doing RGB color align, I would just come over here to the RGB channels and just stretch the red up some and I'm going to bring down the green and there's your true RGB raw data but I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need that right now so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to home create new and I already have on my clipboard the size that I need I'm going to go grayscale 16 bit white create. This should be the same size as this. Now if it's not, we can just go control A, control C, go back home and it'll be again on the clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and create this two more times. The same thing, grayscale, 16 bit, white. And then on the last one, I need to create one more. This is going to be our RGB image. 16 bit white backgrounds fine and create that so now we're set up we have three gray channels and an RGB channel this is what we're gonna need so when we shoot in duo band what happens is on our um, image we get one channel for red and both channels green and blue are both the hydrogen alpha wavelengths. It ends up going into both. So the signal is actually going to be stronger and it's going to be held over the two channels here on green and blue. So we can take and see the blue channel, the green and blue channel, and you'll see all that data right there. Those are going to be the O3. This is going to be your hydrogen alpha channel. So we're going to take this on channels, on red, control A, control C. Now over here, on our first one, we can control V to paste, and that did not work. <laughs> okay, so control A, delete. Why did that not work? Oh, because I'm selecting everything. We want to just be selecting the red channel. Control A, control C. Come over here, control V. Now we just have the hydrogen alpha. Okay. So now here on the green channel, control A, control C, and we're gonna paste that in here. On blue, we're gonna paste that into the same one. Now see we have two layers here. Now for the green channel, I want to bring that up above and I just want to bring down the opacity to about 50%. We can even try to do like, we can use lighten, uh, multiply. That would actually probably work best. No, maybe multiplication at 50%. Let's see. 
Yeah, we can do that. That'll work just fine. Play around with the settings until you get something that you like. And then we can merge visible and stretch from there. Hydrogen alpha I would leave alone, but I'm going to want to duplicate this for the sulfur 2. Now this one we're going to have to emulate a little bit and kind of soften it down. Since we haven't taken any sulfur 2 data, it doesn't really exist, so we're going to have to make it. So on the third panel, just control V that in there. Going to merge visible. And then on levels, we're just going to de-stretch it. Probably to about there. So there will be like a little bit of sulfur inside that area, but not much. So I just took the uh, center bar here on adjustments up in the upper right hand corner for levels and just brought it up some until I get something that I like and it's not as bright as this. Merge visible on this, get everything single layered. And then what I personally like to do is do a um, noise reduction at this stage and I'm using Astroflat Pro you can use your own noise reduction process that you like this is how I like to do it and I just like to get in here and just make sure that I have most or all the noise removed out of the images and just flatten them all And I'm going to do them all exactly the same. All exactly flat. Oh, see, I didn't merge visible on this one. Okay. So, now let's do that again. Now we should have a perfectly even colored background on all of these. Now we can start building our RGB SHO. So SHO in Hubble palette is sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. So we're going to start with the sulfur, control A, control C. In channels, we're going to only select the red and paste that in. Then the hydrogen in green. and the oxygen in blue. Now we select that. It looks really extreme. This is where we start getting fancy with our colors. So what I'm gonna do is, again, give this another stretch and bring down that background. The green is really extreme, and so is the blue, so I'm going to have to tone that down. But as you can see, the colors and the distinguishability of all of the detail is really in there. So what I like to do is I go into... I'm going to create a new levels channel first. For the reds, open up our histogram and we can see there's zero red in here. So maybe we can pull that up a bit. For the green, pull that back a little bit. And the blue, I want to pull that back a little bit. Maybe just a tiny bit. Now we do have miscolored stars, we'll take care of that in a bit. What I want to do now is actually adjust some of the hue on here so in greens. Can maybe pull that to a little bit more yellow. On the blues. Pull that a little bit more yellow as well. Magentas, let's see. 
we don't have any magentas in here, that's fine. Can leave that cyan. So that's what I want. And I just want to get it like kind of like an aqua color. And go like that. Remember, this kind of processing is all subjective on how you like it. I actually don't like what I did with the greens, so I can pull that back some. I'm not seeing a huge distinguishability anymore. There we go. Still got a lot of that cloud structure with that, which I like. I do want to pull that to there. And then on master, so what kind of happens is trying to get something that you really like. But I think that's where I'm going to end up right there. I think that looks good. So once you're happy with the image there, you can do merge visible. And let's take care of the star color to get all the uh, blues and greens out of the background. I find that really unappealing. So what I want to do is here on hue and saturation, I'm going to take the saturation down by a lot until the stars look good. But see what happens is we lose all the color out of the nebula. That's not what we want. So I'm going to take a brush inside of the layer mask flip it to where I have a black brush at zero hardness and then I'm just gonna paint around the nebula bringing that color back and it pops So I'm going to merge visible there. Now things that I can do here is take this process called increase star color. Bring in just a little bit more color in there. And then I like to run this process here, local contrast enhancement. And it just brings a little more structure into the nebula itself. So now if we look at it, you can see a lot more of the structure inside. And that'll do it. Just a really quick and dirty process. You can go ahead and process it to your heart's extent, spend several days on it. It's just a tutorial on getting the colors from the Hubble palette. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.